Hi, Dave here at National Violins. Today we're talking about how to tighten up your bow. So if you're a beginner, you may not know exactly how to tighten your bow and loosen it. So it's pretty straightforward. When you put your bow away, it should be loose, especially with a, a wood bow or a nicer bow. If you don't loosen that up, it'll lose that curve that it has. So you'll see here that it's curved where the stick and the hair are close together. When you get ready to play, you have to put tension onto the hair. And so you use the old righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, so we're going to go around to the right or clockwise to tighten that. As you turn that screw, you'll see that it gets tighter. As it gets tighter, the stick and the hair get further apart. If you go too far, you can back that off. On a violin bow, you want to have it about the same width as a pencil. So you can put a pencil in there to test that width. You don't ever want to use your finger because you don't want to touch the bow with your hands where you might have some, some grease or some other things that shouldn't be on the hair so you don't want to touch that. For a viola bow, it's going to be about the same, so you'll tighten that up about the same tightness. With a cello bow, you're going to want to go a little tighter because it's a stronger stick. So normally with that, kind of think of either those fatter kindergarten pencils or a piece of chalk a little bit further on that one. On a bass bow, whether you're using a French or a German grip, they already have more of a space between there, so you obviously have to go tighter than that. Um, you'll end up cranking these down quite a bit more to get the tension on that. But you have the same procedure where you see that the stick and the hair start to get a little further apart. Once you start seeing that on a bass or a cello bow, that's a good place to start, and then your teacher can work with you so you get used to what the feel is for how much tension to put on to the bow. Now, when you get your bow, it may not have enough rosin on it and it may not make any sound. So in order to put rosin on the bow, it's pretty straightforward again. You'll tighten your bow up to where it's ready to play. And if you have a student rosin, it'll be in something similar to this. You want to make sure and hold on to the rosin by the little box that it comes in. And don't put your fingers onto that. Again, you don't want any oils on that. I usually hold the bow in this hand and rosin like I'm bowing to put a little bit of rosin onto the bow. Some people do it the other way around. If you've got a nicer rosin with a cloth, you have to kind of hold that cloth that way. Still, you don't want to touch that. Um, you don't ever need to rosin all the way up to the frog because you never played that close to that. Some people will put a thumb there to stop them from running into it or just stop short. And you'll put just a couple of strokes on there to get started. You can sometimes feel what that feels like if it has a spot that's not gripping, um, it's real slick, then you can hit that a little bit more if you need to. But with most rosins, just a couple of swipes will get you started. You don't want to put too much rosin on when you start. Don't touch the hair. If you want to clean your, your bow, you can wipe it with a nice cloth like that to keep it nice and clean. When you're done playing, you'll do the same thing. You'll loosen it by going counterclockwise until the stick and the hair are close together. You don't ever want to go so loose that that the screw wants to come out. Then you can have where the frog falls off, the hair gets in there, and that can make a big mess. And then you have to get your bow re -haired. So only go loose enough to where you see the sticks touching, a couple loose hairs. Don't let this, this start to come out. You're ready to put that bow away.